I can't believe it, but he looks like he is doubling down and no one's going to be able to force him out. You know, the five stages of grief are said to start with denial, right? It's not happening. No, it's not the, the case. And then I think eventually we're going to get to bargaining and anger and finally acceptance. But the odds of a Democratic president being able to withstand the kind of media assault that he is under right now are slim and none. I've never seen it done before. I mean, he'd have to pull a Trump, and he's no Trump. The, the, the leftists in our country care what the New York Times says. They care what's in Politico and on CNN and MSNBC and Morning Joe. And they're hearing almost universally the same message, which is he's infirm. He is in cognitive decline. They're lying to us about his ability to do it. And, oh, by the way, he can't win. He can't win. And the most devastating thing that's happened to Joe Biden after the Thursday night debate. I remember this time last week we talked and I said, oh, I can't wait to talk to you after the debate. My God, if only we had seen exactly how catastrophic it would be. Uh, the, the only thing that really mattered after that debate was this release by Puck News of the internal Democrat polls. And those are the best reason I've seen so far to predict it's over for Joe Biden. And I think what annoys me is that the people who are trying to move him on are not doing it because he's an embarrassment to the country. They're not doing it because he can't govern the country. They're simply doing it because they think he can't win. Yeah. So two points on that. Um, one, the polls are so bad. I don't know how to describe to you how bad they are. Yes, The New York Times is putting it at a six point spread among likely voters. It's, I think, nine with registered, which is just absolutely devastating. But we don't have a national election here. We, we have, you know, an electoral college. And what that means is these critical six to eight, depending on how generous you are, swing states are going to decide this presidential race. And he's hemorrhaging in the swing, swing states now. He's lost at least two points, according to these internal Democrat polls, uh, in every single swing state. CBS News has a poll out putting it at more like four points of loss. Sorry, it's more like between two and three on the internal poll, more like four with CBS. And it's not just the swing states now. That debate has made non-swing states, states that are reliably blue states, suddenly swing states or leaning red. New Hampshire, Donald Trump is now up by two. Joe Biden won New Hampshire by seven. Just six months ago, he was winning it by 10. It's been a 12 point swing. New Hampshire to Donald Trump's territory. New Mexico, uh, Joe Biden now up just by one uh, in the five way. He's up by two in the two way. Just before the debate, Biden was up by seven. New Mexico, we should not be talking about this state. It is reliably blue. Same story in Virginia, which once upon a time was red, but for the past several election cycles has been solidly blue. All those Democrats from Washington, D.C. moved there. It's right next door in Northern Virginia and turned it blue. No longer. It's looking redder and redder by the second. Forget the swing states. He's taking the reliably blue states and making them swing states or red states. That is going to lead them to kick him out. Now, yes, it's ultimately his decision, but he's not going to be able to withstand party leadership coming out and pushing him. And mark my words, if these party leaders believe he's going to cost them the Senate and the House, right, That they're because the Democrats are hoping to reclaim, reclaim control of the House. So if he's going to cost them the Senate and the House and the White House, they will push him out. They will make it so that he cannot hold on. So that's point number one. And point number two on the news media, the only reason that they're doing this is because the jig is up. We saw with our own eyes the state that he is in. It is no longer possible for them to deny the state that he's in. We, we've now seen and heard it for 90 minutes straight. And on top of that, they've realized that their lawfare campaign failed. It failed miserably. And so they have no choice but to break glass in case of emergency, and do the unthinkable. Get rid of him and try their luck with anyone, anyone other than Biden. Let's talk about Kamala. Is there any proof that she would do any better? Every poll I've ever seen says she's less popular than Biden. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. And I think there's 
fair amount of evidence to the contrary. She right now, according to the latest poll, um, is doing a little better in a hypothetical matchup against Joe Biden than Biden is, uh, in a matchup against Donald Trump than Biden is. However, her numbers will fall precipitously. They will fall like that as soon as they say she's the new nominee. The Republicans will unleash a flurry of ads. And unlike what the Democrats said were cheap fakes, they don't have to cheap fake anything. By the way, they weren't cheap fakes. They were real, uh, all of Biden's infirm moments. They just have to keep showing Kamala Harris. Just show her. Don't, she doesn't have to be stumbling. She doesn't have to be falling down like Joe Biden. Just show her. Show her laughing. Show her attempts at humor. Show her attempts to instruct us about space, about Ukraine, about being unburdened by what has been, by what can be, which is about said about 40 times a day, every time she's trying to inspire us. She is not an inspirational leader. She knows about as much as this pen on most of our history. And no one wants to spend any more time with her. So her numbers will fall and they will fall fast. And the Democrats know this. They have to pretend that they're considering her because the biggest voting block of the Democrat Party is black women. They can't tell those people they're turfing the black woman who they put into the office because she's black and a woman. How's that going to go? They have to play the game where we're open-minded. We love Kamala. Oh, Kamala, she'd be great. While they bring in the, the bench, who they really want. You know, people like Gretchen Whitmer, they all love the Michigan governor. And I have to say, she's a much more compelling figure than Kamala Harris. Um, Gavin Newsom is getting more buzz than ever. But everybody on that bench has to have the same message for now, which is never. Biden's my guy. I love him. He's so dreamy. He's handsome. He's more robust than ever. And they're going to play that game until he goes and they get tapped on the shoulder and they just reluctantly step in for the good of the country.